Good morning, Kevin. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm good. How are you guys? Doing pretty well. Is this team a championship contender in your mind, or have they kind of lucked out in some of these one-score games? Well, I think it's a combination of both. But they, you know, when you pile up this many wins, you put yourselves, you put yourself in position to not only make the playoffs, but to have a really good seed. And in the due to the relative uh, weakness, I think of the NFC, you, know, you have to consider them one of the you know, two, three top contenders to at least reach the Super Bowl. And so that that puts you in championship contention by fault, default. So I, I have to think that they've done enough already to put themselves in that spot. Um, are they one of the top three teams in the NFL, four teams in the NFL? I don't know that I'd say that, but just given the numbers and given the strength of the NFC, I think they're right there already. What's their strength and weakness as a team? Their absolute strength is that they do all the little things right. Um, and those things have added up to really decide the outcomes of all these close games they've played. Um, you know, whether it's game management or strategy, you know, there was a point at which they were the highest scoring team uh, in the last four minutes of the first half where they were really stealing a bunch of points and heading into the second half in really good shape. Uh, and that was very intentional by Kevin O'Connell, their coach. Uh, their penalties have been way down. Their turnovers have been way down. Their takeaways have been way up. Um, so all those little things that, that add up to, to affect outcomes of games, uh, they've been really good at. Uh, and their weaknesses, they've had lulls um, where they, you know, after sort of their, their, op- their opening drives uh, on offense and, and, and their defense also in the first half, uh, where they give up a lot of yards. They give up a lot of yards, and they don't gain a lot of yards. And so they've had some leads that they've lost, and they've had some games where they've fallen behind uh, pretty significantly, especially in Buffalo last week. And so they, they need to even out their play. Um, they need to even out their, their defensive uh, coverage and, and pass rush over time during a game. And, uh, and that's why they haven't been able to pull away in some of these games, and they've all been so close. I think that he is easily the most anonymous coach in the entire Mm -hmm. NFL. Uh, We were focusing on that job because apparently the Vikings had interest in Kellen Moore. It goes to Kevin O'Connell. What can you tell us about Kevin O'Connell? He's, you know, he he was drafted by the Patriots as a player and only spent one year there, but seems to have picked up a lot of the, uh, the, the game management strategies and the overall philosophy of winning. Um, from them, you know, they, uh, like I said, they really, you know, he's the play caller as well. And so he's really aggressive um, at the end of the half and in the fourth quarter. He, you know, you see some of these throws that Kirk Cousins is making uh, in the fourth quarter. And that's, and that's uh, as a result of, of Kevin O'Connell really pushing him to attack and use the, the weapons that they have. And so he's, he's uh, played a big role in, 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 you know, sort of evolving the Vikings offense from a run first to a pass first. Uh, scheme uh, using Dalvin Cook a lot as well in the passing game, but really taking advantage of the of the superstar they have in Justin Jefferson and and the top end uh, that they can get from Kirk Cousins. And he's you know he was he was NFL teams always go 180 degrees. You know you go from Mike Zimmer, who's a def- older defensive coach, you know crusty personality, to a <laughs> a, 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 y- a younger offensive minded coach uh, who's a little more happy go lucky and, and kind of happy to be there. And you see so many teams make that 180-degree turn, and, and the Vikings have done that, and it's paid dividends for sure. Um, there's uh, a lot more looseness in the, in the locker room. Uh, he's relying on a lot of the veterans that he inherited from Cousins to Adam Thielen to Patrick Peterson to Harrison Smith to kind of keep everybody in line in that locker room, and, um, and it's worked. Um, you know, I, I don't know that anybody could have said that, that they would it would work to this extent, but yeah, you often see teams, uh, especially uh, teams that have veteran cores that they're keeping intact, uh, make this kind of uh, uh, transition and, and have some success. And Choppy, he's from, Kevin O'Connell is from. You go to Oregon? He didn't go to Oregon, did he? He's from Knoxville. Is he really? He's from Knoxville, I Tennessee. Didn't know that. Uh, Kevin Seifert going behind enemy lines here on 105 through the fan. Is he a uh, like a fourth down Riverboat gambler, caution to the wind, or is is like you know is he kind of is he still, you know, settle for the field goal? Let's punt it all away on fourth and two. What what kind of coach is you that? Know, he he's been a mix of that, and the interesting thing is because he's the play caller, he makes the fourth down decisions not so much on you know analytics say you do this or don't do this. He makes it based on am I going to have a play that I think that I like on fourth down. 
Um, and so, and he knows that on third down. And so he'll call the third down play based on whether he's going to go for it on fourth down. So it's a little bit more of an organic type of decision-making, but it's very efficient. You know, it's not like they have to call a timeout and talk about whether they, what play they want to use and all that, you know, they, he, because he's both the, the play caller and the head coach and the game manager, he has all that, um, uh, you know, in one, he's, he's the person making all those decisions. So you do see him going for a fourth down and, you know, the opening drive, of the season, they were had a fourth and, and one at like at the at the three or so um, uh, against the Packers, and he w- immediately went for it with his fly sweep to Justin Jefferson because he knew based on what the Packers were doing, it had a very good chance of succeeding, and it did. Um, he's also kicked some short field goals. He's also punted from near midfield. So it's it's there's really no you know sort of ca- category I would put him in. It's 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 much more seems to be organic decision making, especially offensively based on what plays he has and, and what plays he thinks might work or it's, not. It's looking, at least judging off of TV and social media, like the chemistry in that locker room is really, really special with the shirtless photos and the necklaces yeah. and calling out the commanders for trying to copy him. Uh, you're in there every day, Kevin. Do, does it feel like a special chemistry? Yeah, and, and the interesting thing is that most of these guys have been playing together for a long time. You know, this is the... With a few additions, this is essentially the core that Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman, the former general manager, had uh, built up over the years and had a lot of, you know, lost, I think, an NFL record number of uh, of one-score games last year um, and has really, you know, just flipped the switch in, into this year. And so I think they ended last year with a really bad taste in their mouth, thinking they were much better than what their record showed. Um, and it just took this little bit of, of you know, new, you know, fresh approach to, to the way they were doing things to really get things turned around. And so they all feel very vindicated that, you know, last year really wasn't, you know, it really was a, uh, a year that they should have been much better than they were. And, and, you know, there's been some individual, you know, Patrick Peterson, especially is, is really thrilled that he's kind of back on the scene as a playmaker and, uh, and, and showing that he's not cooked yet and, and make, really making a run at the Hall of Fame. And so there's a lot of, I think, personal vindication happening and a lot of um, people realizing that uh, they went so far in the other direction that this, this kind of season doesn't happen very much. You know, there has definitely been some luck and some good fortune and some good health involved. And so they, and, and Peterson's been talking about this a lot, that you have to enjoy seasons like this because no matter what the circumstances are, how good of a player you are, how many good players you have in your locker room, eight and one doesn't happen very much for anybody. Even, you know, the, the, the Patriots when they're winning Super Bowls every year, like they weren't, that, even those seasons were, could be more of a struggle than what the Vikings have seen record-wise. And so they're really just trying to embrace the fact that these kind of things don't happen too often and, and, and enjoy it while you can. Vikings beat reporter Kevin Seifert joining us from ESPN. Uh, why are you an underrated good guy? <laughs> that was something that somebody uh, told uh, tweeted about me uh, a few years ago, and uh, I thought it was a perfect uh, combination of, of a backhand compliment and a, and a shot, and so I threw it in my Twitter bio. But I, I think most people, if, if it's underrated, it's because they don't know me. If you know me, I'm a good guy without it being underrated. Who's the worst of like all the? You know, we we know Archer, a uh, Ben Babies uh-huh. from here. I see your yeah. your profile group photo with all the insiders. Who's Who's the worst of all of them? All, all, all the Kevin Seifert's on the other teams. Uh, the worst of them. Well, Archer, you know, Archer likes to pretend that he's a he's a grumpy, um, a he grumpy, dis- dissatisfied guy. <laughs> Leave me alone. I, I, I want to do things the way I did things in the nineteen eighties. But he's a sweetheart and uh, and uh, loves nothing more than to talk about his his daughter's uh, soccer uh, uh, travails. And so he he likes to pretend that he's the worst. But we all know better. Who's the cheapest? <laughs> <laughs> uh, ask John Kime one day, uh, uh, who's our, our, our Washington reporter, if he likes to um, if he likes to uh, to to pay for the the St. Elmo's shrimp cocktail in Indianapolis. <laughs> How much is that? I've always, I've always wanted to eat it. How much is it actually? I don't know. I never look because I've never I've never uh, eaten there on my own dime, so I don't even know. But it's it's not cheap, I don't think. That cocktail sauce, man. Okay, so. the Cowboys' weakness, Kevin, is run defense. Uh, we're usually terrified of Dalvin Cook. Dalvin is eighth in the league in rushing, but the Vikings is, as a team are tenth worst in, in rushing offense. I, explain to us what type of year Dalvin Cook and, and this run offense is having. You know, it, it's been solid. You know, the the, the uh, he's had a 
before he's had like two long runs. He had one against Miami that was like 50 some, and then he had the 81 yarder against the Bills. Um, and they've had a lot of runs where he it looks like he's getting tripped at that last second before he really breaks it. And so um, he's definitely been part of this offensive transition where they've, you know, I don't know if the numbers bear it out, but they're definitely, you know, they run the offense through Justin Jefferson. For a long time, they ran the offense through Dalvin Cook in the Mike Zimmer philosophy, and now they run the offense through Justin Jefferson. Cook, he's playing more snaps than ever. Like, he's on the field almost the whole game, every game, and he's he had a separated shoulder and didn't miss a start. So he's playing a ton. Um, they want him on the field for the threat of the run and also because he's pretty good in the pass game. Um, but they haven't had many games where they could just – they got to a lead and they could just run the ball to, in the second half to, to get to the victory. They've had to throw a lot to get to those wins. And so I think that probably accounts for why they're overall, um, as a team, they're not rushing for as many yards as, as a lot of teams in the NFL. But it's been relatively effective when they've been able to use it. They just haven't been able to pour it on in the second halves when you would like to when you have a big lead. Minnesota made a move that many love during the deadline. What has been the early impression of TJ Hawkinson? Unbelievable how well he learned I mean, this offense in a short amount of time. You know, one of the themes that was happening in the OTAs in the spring and even through training camp was people like Kirk Cousins and Adam Thielen, you know, veteran guys who had been around for a long time saying they were really struggling to pick up the offense because it was so different than what they've done before and so much different terminology and months and months of study and Kirk Cousins is talking about flashcards and Thielen's talking about being swimming, you know, every day in, in the playbook. And Hogginson came in and learned it enough in the four days that he played wow. like 70 of the seven, or I think it was like 60 of the 65 snaps of that game in Washington and really looked like he knew what he was doing. So really mentally sharp, uh, picked up the offense, has quit very, you know, Kirk Cousins has always liked throwing the tight ends dating back to his time in Washington, as long as he has a guy that he trusts and, and, and knows what he's doing. And, and Hogginson definitely falls in that category. So he just looks to him all the time. Uh, he hasn't been any huge plays that he's made in terms of yardage, but he's converted a bunch of first, uh, third downs in the first downs and, and really, um, uh, you know, if you if you match up the numbers that Justin Jefferson has put up in those two games against the, the previous ones, you'll see an uptick with him as well, and that makes sense based on the way defenses have to have to approach things now. Are they going to re-sign him, or is he a rental? Well, he's he's locked in for next year under his fifth year option, so they have him at least through next year. And I, I but I do think that they, you know, there's nobody on the roster necessarily that is you know going to over you know take him. So I think that they. They certainly want him long term and, and fits the O'Connell scheme very well. And so, uh, again, they have him through next year, and I think they want him longer than that. Kevin, thank you so much for the time, man. We enjoyed it and uh, enjoy the game on Sunday. We'll catch up with you probably for the fifth year in a row next season right. since these te two teams <laughs> keep playing. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.